What is going on, everybody? You are back on another edition of Ballin' Over Beers. My name is Justin Dupengeiser, and I am joined, as always, by my guys, Mr. James Fitch, Mr. A.K. Howe. James, what's up, brother? Not too much, man. Happy uh, happy Wednesday. You guys realize that uh, we're going to have a show on St. Patty's Day? I, I didn't think of that until just now, but I like the sounds <laughs> of that. Yes. Doing car bombs for everybody. A.K., what's the, up? The Guinness, the Guinness specials. Guinness that night. <laughs> Uh, not much. Uh, the listeners know that we're all from Buffalo. I've been reading some it's pretty sad Sabres news, but other than that, uh, another, another good day. Yeah, another good day. Sabres are so bad, dude. It's not it's so I mean, disappointing. The, the best thing that I've seen so far is just how, how everybody loves Dylan Cousins just pounding that dude last night in that fight. That no, was pretty sweet. <laughs> the, the Sabres don't even, they're not even worth mentioning on the show. They're not. It's just it's, so bad literally the best thing that happened to him all year was the fight last night that Dylan Cousins got in. Yeah. That's Hang a banner. Happens. Hang the banner, baby. <laughs> Get it up there. Absolutely. You guys seeing all the news already with the football? They're talking people are getting cut already, released, or talked about getting Gabe Jackson. They're talking, the Raiders talking about trading Trent Brown. Golden Tate just got released. Terrell Williams just signed with the Lions. Somehow. Yeah. League season doesn't even start for two weeks. And is that, is that just like talked about isn't that tampering i don't even know how it Does, works. yeah i'm always thrown off by like when like things with like jj watt where he was like released and he's already like signed and i'm like yeah. how does this stuff work with like tampering and the league or the the league year starting like that stuff always confuses me doesn't make legal it. tampering and whatever yeah they have the legal tampering period now dude that's, they've been talking the entire time probably um, it's like the it just when uh, Stafford got traded there to the to the uh, Rams, and he just happened to be on vacation in the same country as Sean McVay at the same exact time. You guys see that one? <laughs> oh, you're here! What a coincidence! Yeah. Oh, didn't know you were at the Sandals in Jamaica. How did that same happen? resort? <laughs> yeah, like what the hell? No, that's crazy. But yeah, I thought it was pretty funny how JJ Watt. Uh, tweeted out how he texted Kyler Murray that he believed in him and that's why he was there. I was like, yeah, there's probably 23 million reasons why you believed in him. And I think a lot of it was that guaranteed money, buddy. Yeah. Well, we should start a pool now predicting which Houston Texan goes to the Cardinals next year. <laughs> Are they, they're, they're turning into like the uh, Bills and Panthers. Bills all and the, Panthers, yeah. yeah. All the Panthers are going to the Bills. And <laughs> ridiculous. My dog right now is scratching at the door because she wants to come in here. She's in she, job. she wants to talk shop. She does. She's not. She's usually so. When we just moved into the house, you know. So usually before she would sit right on the couch with me, but now I can like go in a separate room and close the door and get away from her. And now she just tries to get in the door the whole yeah. time. She's That's in, not how it works with dogs. No, <laughs> dogs are the worst. They're the best, but she's so needy. She's, yeah. a need, she's worse than a kid. She's needy. Um. Talk some quarterbacks here or what? Yeah. All right. So, obviously, the past few shows, we've talked about fantasy running back rankings, fantasy wide receiver rankings. And today, we are going to go through and give our 2021 fantasy quarterback ratings. Obviously, stuff can change between now and then. Stuff is going to change. Um, we were just talking about all the free agencies that are already getting talked about releasing. I, I can't remember who tweeted it out. But they said that some – they were talking with some NFL executive and they basically said it was going to be like a massacre. It was going to be a bloodbath, how everybody's going to start getting released. So it'll be interesting to see. This offseason is going to be wild. But let's uh, let's start it off here. We'll go AK. You go first. Give us your top five. Um, at one, along with everyone else in the world, I have Mahomes. Two, I have Murray. Three, Aaron Rodgers. Four, Josh Allen. And five, I have – Deshaun Watson, even though kind of unknown where he's going to be, I kind of just assumed, just left him with the Texans for now, and I still think he's going to be in the five spot there. Okay. We'll go back. We'll come back to Watson for sure. James, why don't you give yours? Yep. So, uh, like AK said, one, I have Mahomes. Uh, two, uh, Josh Allen. Three, Murray. Uh, four, I have Deshaun. And five, I have Lamar. All right, so mine is pretty different. I have Mahomes one, Murray two, three. I have Dak 
four I have Lamar, and five I have Justin Herbert. So let's let's talk yeah. Watson first because he's obviously been a, a pretty big focus of this offseason. One, AK, I'll ask you, you said you think he stays with the Texans. Do you think that if he stays with the Texans, he'll sit out? No, I didn't mean it that he's going to stay with the Texans. I just made my ranking if he just stays with that the would. Texans. I got you. Right. Right. Okay, so with that, say he's with the Texans. Do you think that he'll sit out at all if he's not traded? No. I mean, at the end of the day, you only have so many years in the NFL, and if you miss a year, you're missing um, – one of your, you know, paychecks. So yeah, at the end of the day, you got to get paid. Yeah. And he, he would before, go if he sat out, cause he's threatened that to sit out, um, you know, up to 10 games, because I think that you have to play after week 10 or something like that to accrue a season. But he said he would sit out up to week 10 and, and that, you know, you're foregoing every single paycheck, which for him is obviously a huge chunk of money. James, do you think that, um, he would sit out and you think with the threat of him sitting out, is he somebody that you would look to draft or would you stay away? Um, so I've been kind of on record on the show as, as saying that I don't think they're going to trade him. I just think it's going to be too hard. I don't think they're going to get the return that they want. So I, I do see him staying in Texan. Um, I, I, I'd normally want to say like, no, he won't sit out. But after seeing love bell set out a season, like I, I feel like he kind of almost set the bar for like it you can do it and you can come right. back and play. He obviously hasn't been the same, but I don't know. Like it would not, it honestly wouldn't shock me if he did. I, I could see him doing like the 10 game thing and then coming, coming back. Um, I, I think when it comes to draft time, we hopefully know a lot more uh, about a situation before having to make that decision. So, you know, I still might not feel comfortable because it, it, it may, be, I mean, I think with the left bell again, I think people were still drafting him pretty early in the first round, thinking that he was going to just show up and play. <laughs> he right. never did. So, right. And I mean, I think it's, you take somebody early like that, that, that can screw you. Yeah. Time. It's risky. I, so, I've got him in my top five right now, just kind of under the assumption that he's a Texan and he's going to play. Uh, obviously, that, that can change. Yeah. I mean, I have him at seven. Um, if he's there, he's going to be good. Uh, you know, I, I do worry that. The offense is going to be different. You know, there's there's new coaches in there. I don't know that whole organization is just a, a mess. So I have him down to seven. I think the talent, you know, is still there, but like the whole rest of everything around him is scary, basically. Uh, I think, I mean, they still have good receivers with Will Fuller and Brandon Cooks, though. No, Fuller's a free well, agent. Well, I, I assumed if Watson stays, they're going to keep Fuller. I think those two are, you know, kind of tight so right yeah and they don't have a first round pick right no exactly they they gave that up for uh Tunzel. and they got a wide receivers coach for a head coach so <laughs> that's true pretty sweet pretty the pass game coordinator that came over from a team that didn't pass <laughs> um, get started on that again <laughs> right um where, where do you guys have Dak because I have him at three because last you know in the past few years when he's been Especially last year, before he got hurt, man, he was he was incredible. He was balling. I have him at seven. Okay, six for me. And I, and I have like the three through. I have Mahomes in his first tier, Murray in his own tier, then three through seven in the tier. So like okay. the Rodgers through Dak is kind of, you know, wherever you get him in the sixth or seventh round in your draft, I feel don't draft up for him because one of those guys will fall to you. Right. Pretty interchangeable there. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've got him at six, so just outside of my top five. I, I still think he's a really good quarterback. I thought I saw, I was trying to, I was just trying to pull something up on my phone. I, I thought something had come out about needing a, another surgery, which could be concerning. Mm. Um, that. Just in terms of like starting on time and being back on time. The other interesting thing is, I think it came out yesterday that he's looking to be like the second highest paid quarterback, which is not happening. I, I don't think, I, I don't know that he's done enough to warrant that, but uh, I just thought that was kind of worth mentioning. No, it's definitely worth mentioning. That's the thing. Like we talk about like how crazy this off, off season could be like, that's, that's another factor right there. Like, um, you know, Dak obviously is coming off a very, very serious injury. You know, I remember watching that live and going, Holy, Holy cow. You could see his ankle right away. It was not, not good. Yeah. Um, 
where did you say did you have Lamar in your top five I've got him at five okay I think those two are kind of interchangeable for me I actually like Dak is I probably should swap those two I, I think I like Dak more as more of like an all-around quarterback when it comes to just throwing and running whereas Lamar uh, I know AK you're you're a little bit lower on him yeah um you know and we've talked about how you you don't think he's really a, a full full quarterback um and I I kind of lead in that direction too it's it's concerning to me how much he regressed this this past season when the ball was kind of given to him to, to throw and they had to rely on him to do that. He, he really let the team down. So from a fantasy perspective, I've got him high. I tend to lean towards those, those quarterbacks that can get you points on the ground and running. I think it's, it's kind of that cheat code. So that's why I still have him ranked so high. Yeah. And I think that's why I have him at four, because I think it's ceiling so high with the rushing yards where they, they changed some stuff up about midway through the year. You know, they were running a lot more spread gap scheme run stuff that really kind of changed um, their offense and the way Lamar was able to run the ball. Um, the problem is, is you saw like what the floor could be and the floor for him could be bad where he's like outside of the top 12 bad. If he's not, you know, rushing and getting, you know, 12, 15 carries and a touchdown, he's throwing for 150 yards a game like he's a high school quarterback, you know. That's, yeah. That, that, that hurts. So he's, he's certainly a guy that if you told me, you know what, I don't think he's worth the risk. I would be like, yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, Justin Herbert, I have him at fifth. I, I, I was contemplating it. I, I feel like he has such a high ceiling. Um, I think that he's going to actually potentially get some real coaching now with, with Anthony Lingon. We talked in the last wide receiver show how Keaton Allen is just habitually – underrated you know and then they have Austin Knuckler coming back healthy which will only help him um I think he made some incredible wild plays last year so I think I think he's he's somebody that the ceiling for him could be tremendous where where do you guys have him AK where do you have him ranked for Herbert I have him at 10 um just because I'm just worried about like a one-year wonder type thing I don't want to overpay right. for someone I'd rather have a um, guaranteed and the difference in points between, you know, the number two quarterback and the number eight quarterback was only 0.6 points a game last year. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, everything's kind of interchangeable and I would rather just have someone that I can count on um, that, that's proved it a couple of years. Right. James, where do you have him? Yeah. So I've got him in an eight. Okay. Um, obviously, encouraging season that he had i'm encouraged by the coaching change um so i'm 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 really intrigued to see the the follow-up season that uh, he has one thing that i i think that and i may put more stock into this than others but i i certainly think it's a thing he played his rookie season in stadiums with no fans he didn't have to worry about crowd noise and all of that stuff and i think when it comes to being a quarterback that's important right so especially as a rookie, I think that was that was advantageous for him to not have to worry about a lot of that stuff, especially on the road. Um, so if there are packed stadiums this year, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how he handles kind of that added pressure again, especially uh, on the road. Yeah, that will be an interesting perspective. It's something that you don't think about. And then it's always funny because like you'll see the old highlights and then you'll see like the stadiums packed with people going crazy. You're like, oh, that's that's what that was like instead of you know, the South Park car cardboard cutouts that are yeah. lining half the stadiums right now. Um, Aki, why don't you go ahead and give us your six through 10? Uh, six, I have Russell Wilson, seven, Dak, eight, Lamar, nine, Stafford, and 10, Herbert. Okay. And James, how about you? Yep. So I had uh, Dak, Rogers, Herbert, Wilson, and Stafford. Okay. So let's start with Stafford because – you guys have him inside your top 10. I have him at 13th. He was the one that I could not figure out what I wanted to do with. And looking at it, I probably can switch. I saw I have James at 12 and I have Stafford at 13. I probably could switch those guys to get him in inside my top 12. Um, James, make, make, make a case for Stafford here for everybody. Uh, I just think the coach makes a world world of difference. I, I think Stafford's finally in just a, a good system with a, a good offensive minded coach. He'll have great receivers. He'll have great 
offensive talent, great running backs. I, I just think it's the ideal situation for him finally. So I, I think that that gives him a huge bump. Like if he were, if he were a Detroit lion, I don't know that I'd have him. I'd probably have him somewhere in the 15 to 20 range. Um, I, I just think it gives him that much of a bump for me. I don't even have Jameis in my top 20 year. I think you're crazy. Do you ask him with me? You don't have Jameis either. He's a backup quarterback. Taysom's the starter. Taysom is not starting that quarterback for the Saints. You are high <laughs> on your ass if you think he's actually starting. Dude. I, I, I could see him being the starter there or somewhere. I I don't know. I, I just don't. Uh, no, Jameis. <laughs> I just I don't have him in my top 20 right now. Okay, so let me – okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. Well, before, the only reason I don't have Jameis in my top 20 is because I did this if I was doing a draft tonight. I wouldn't want to draft someone that's not an official starter yet. That's if I if I knew Jameis was an official starter, he would probably be around the 12, 13 range for me. Okay. Uh, speaking about the Saints, they just released you, Jared, Jared Cook and Josh Hill. So apparently they're going tight endless this year. No tight ends for the Saints. Mm, Taysom's going to play tight end. Dude, that's what it is. He's going to play quarterback and tight end. He's that good. And then he's yep. going to cover kicks and punts. <laughs> Um, AK, talk to me about your boy Rodgers. So I had Rodgers at 10 to round out the top 10. Now, obviously, he's coming off his MVP season, but that was probably his best year in what four or five years. Um, do you do you think that they actually do something where they put they go out and put another wide receiver out there for him and actually give him some help finally? I do. Um, I think that they're gonna either draft an offensive talent or go out and get a wide receiver in free agency. The free agency depth in the wide receiver market is pretty big this year. And I think they saw in the playoffs again this year that they can't just count on Devontae Adams to score in the red zone. He needs another consistent target that's not going to drop balls and move MVS over to the three or even at the two that, that they keep threat to keep stretching the field. So I like Rodgers a lot. Um, he seems like he's in a good place, and I just don't see how you can go from the season he had at his count level all the way down to wherever you had him at 10. I had them at, yeah, I had him at 10. Well, one, he's a year older, um, and, and I think that's my thing. He's a year older. He hasn't played this well or put up this big of numbers in four or five years. Now, maybe it's because it was the second year in the system with the floor, so maybe he's just getting – more comfortable with it and, and they're as an offense are getting more comfortable with it. So maybe he'll be fine. I also, it, it worries me the, the threat of how much they do like to run the ball. Um, I, you know, they had how many yeah. games, you know, Devonte Adams, how many one yard touchdowns did he have? All of them. All of them. All he, had, them with it. he had all of them. One. As, as an Air Jones owner, James knows. I, it's uh, we talked about this uh, last week or two weeks ago. Like it felt like Aaron Jones, it felt like his season compared to the 2019 season was terrible. And he actually had a really good year. I think he still ended up scoring around nine touchdowns or something like that. Whereas the year before he had like 20, yeah. which is just unfathomable. So, so Aaron Jones will be interesting to see what they do with him. But the other piece of that offense that they have to figure out is uh, Tunyon. So he's a restricted free agent. He had a breakout season. And I just think like, that's a tough piece to lose you know, coming off the, the season Aaron Rodgers had. So it'll be interesting to see what they want to do with him too. When we talk about bringing in more talent, well, you've got two really good players on the offense right now that you have to figure out what to do with. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the thing too. You don't think about that. Sometimes, sometimes free agency isn't about bringing in, in guys. It's just retaining your own talent. You know, how, that's a very good point. How does the, um, one thing I don't know a lot about in the NFL is the restricted free agent, um, the tenders that go with them. How, do, how does that work? So basically, I think it's you can put a contract on a guy and say, like, all right, Aaron Jones, we're going to give him this contract. And if you sign him or take him, we're going to get a second round pick. In okay. Him. So it's it's kind of like hockey, I think. Similar, yeah. I, think. Yep. Do you I think don't know if the teams are signing the um draft no, I think they, it or I, I think they do i think they do and then com the compensat i can't say that word compensatory picks compensatory picks they don't the nfl just randomly assigns that and that's totally different that's like if you lose a player to free agency and they play like x amount of 
time for in money or something like that, then you get a yeah. big return for that. Will they franchise tag Jones? Do you think? I don't know. Do you want to like is no tagging the running back worth it? It doesn't seem like they should with the two guys they've got behind them. I think right. Jamal Williams is a serviceable back, and then um, Dylan. I mean, I think he showed right. potential too. So it'd be strange to me if they did. It almost seems like they drafted Dylan knowing that this year Jones is going to be gone, right? Because they right. drafted Dylan relatively high. Second yeah. round. Second round. Right. Exactly. Um, Russell Wilson. Let's talk about him. I have him at eight. James, where did you have him? Nine. And AK? Six. Six. Okay. So I think that we're all kind of in the same ballpark. And I think, do you believe Pete Carroll when he says he, he, he wants to run the ball? One. Two, are, do you think with all the drama that's going on? Because I, I saw a report the other day that, and I, you know, right now it's just so crazy. You have no idea what's true and what's not, but that they're saying they're sick of the drama and they, they might want to get rid of Russell Wilson and just trade them all, all together. AK, can you, do you think that they'll trade Russell Wilson? I don't think they're going to trade Russell Wilson. And how I take the Carroll saying they want to run the ball more, I think they just want to be able to run efficiently and run it on downs that you have to be able to run the football on, you know, third and one, um, be able to run the ball on first down and count on getting four or five yards. Their running game was just inconsistent last year. I don't think he means they want to run the ball 35 times. So well, that makes that's sense. kind of where I am. James, do you do you worry, though, um, with that ranking? Is that kind of where why you knocked him down? Because traditionally, if you think about Russell Wilson, he's usually put in the top three to five best quarterbacks in the NFL. Now, fantasy-wise, is obviously a very different ball game, but that's why I have him as at eight is, you know, you, you do wonder with the struggles at the end of the last year what they are going to do with them and if they are going to run the ball more. Yeah, I, I definitely have those concerns over Carroll's comments about wanting to run the ball. I think Wilson could be last season's Aaron Rodgers. So Aaron Rodgers came off a pretty mediocre season. I mean, I, I think we saw Rodgers go at what? eighth ninth round in a lot of drafts and fantasy drafts I don't know that Wilson's going to go that late but I could see him end up being that that Rodgers type player that maybe gets drafted a little bit too low falls in drafts too far and then you scoop him up and then he has a great season so it it wouldn't surprise me to see that happen I I just I don't know they they, they've got a change in offensive coordinators there in Seattle so hopefully that helps I guess we'll just have to see but that's why I've got him down at nine. I think he's a phenomenal quarterback, but just, I think Chris Carson might be a free agent too. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with that running back position in terms of how, how much they want to run and things like that. So. Yep. No, and that's what, yeah, that's why, that's why I have him at eight. So pretty much the same, same thought process as you. Um, my number nine, I have Joe Burrow, AK, your boy. Do you have Burrow inside that's your top 12? I have Burrow at 12. Burrow at 12. James, where do you got Burrow? 12. 12 as well. So I'm a little bit higher than you guys on him. I think that for, for me, um, you saw last year just the the talent and how good he could be. Um, you know, obviously he's got to come back from the injury. I think that's the big thing with him. But nowadays with the ACLs, I feel like that's the recovery time and recovery in general is so much quicker and better um, that it shouldn't be too much of a worry. Uh, for him you know I think that they're only going to continue to get better obviously they have to address the offensive line and I think Mm -hmm. that's really really what it comes down to if they can fix the old line a little bit you know hopefully you know a penny uh, Sewell drops to him and they can draft him Um, but you know if T Higgins is my sleeper for wide receivers I think that Joe Burrow you know deserves to be in in that top 12. Uh, AK you got anything further on Burrow I know that's your boy I just am worried that the Bengals aren't going to address the offensive line and just think those guys can get better. And because of that, you might have Burrow sit out the first couple of weeks, if not the first half of the season, just to make sure he is 100%. Because you don't want him to be 90% behind that offensive line. He's your franchise quarterback. So, Right. No, that makes sense. I think that's a fair argument, too. I, I, I think that the best case scenario from them is that, you know, uh, Sewell does, does drop to him. At, they're at five, right? 
Yeah. yeah, they're at five. And there's reports that they're looking at Jamar Chase, which I absolutely hate because I want them to, you know, you build your team inside out until you have a great offensive line. Yeah. I don't want him to turn into, you know, what Andrew Luck was with the Colts where they kept drafting receivers, but he had no one blocking for him and he retires at 28. Right. Yeah, dude, he got he got murdered. <laughs> he was getting literally, what was the, it was even like, what is the Browns? He had like 55 or 65 passes or something like that. And it was like, he was just getting killed every pass. Yeah. So um, crazy. Uh, let's round out the top 12 here. Uh, my 11 is, is Jalen Hurts and my 12 is Jameis Winston. Flamus Jameis. AK, what is your 11-12? I have uh, Mr. Underrated Ryan Tannehill at 11 and uh, Joey Burrow at 12. James? Same. I've got Tannehill 11, Burrow 12. Where do you guys have Jalen Hurts? Um, I have him at 16. Okay. 13. 13. Okay, so I have him inside my tw- top 12. And then my thought process for that was he's almost in the like the Lamar Jackson type bucket for me. He, he has such a um, built-in floor with his running ability that I, I think that he, he – He's a cheat code. Yeah, dude, he's – dude, that, have you ever seen that guy, the lifting like highlights that he yeah. had? Dude, he like he's like deadlifting and power clean like 500, 600 pounds, like with the linemen. That guy is a freak show, man. Um, but I, I think with the built-in running floor, he's just – you got to make the argument for him inside the top 12 just because yeah. he's going to run the ball more than anybody, I, I feel, as, as, or as much as Lamar does, which makes him a top 12 to me. Is he a guaranteed locked in 100% the starter for the Eagles? Um, no. I don't think he is, and I've seen a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of stuff saying like, "Don't be surprised if the Eagles draft a quarterback." So I don't know. Like that's that's why I'm probably maybe a little bit lower. I mean, I 13 is still pretty high, and and right. again, like you said, Justin, because of that 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 rushing ability, I think, increases his floor a little bit. But I don't know. So the Eagles are at six, right? Yeah. The Eagles are a team that should draft like Jamar Chase because they have no, no weapons. Right. No, I no, I agree with that because that's they, what worried. They released Alshon Jeffrey and Deshaun Jackson too, right? I didn't even know Alshon Jeffrey's still in the league anymore. <laughs> he's he's so good. AK doesn't even know he plays the anymore. best. The best dynasty trade I ever made with you, Justin. Yeah, <laughs> I Rating. know. What, what did you? What did I give you? Like a second round pick for him or something like that? I no, I got. I think like Matt Ryan. I'd have to go back and look. Uh, yeah. Austin Hooper, I think a pick that led to Austin Hooper. Um, I think a first. I, I don't remember. So maybe a second, but I think he's played like three games since I traded him to you. So yeah, it was w- one of the worst trades in history of trading, dude. I, I, made, <laughs> I made some moves in Dynasty though. Made it all worth it when I won this year. That was I, me last I, year. I have like no picks left for the next two or three years, but. I sold out to I sold out to Worth it. one year. That's it, man. I wanted Bring one ship. Uh, James wanted was one great win. at trading uh, guys away and them getting injured. He did that with Joe Mixon to me this year. Uh, yeah. So did he get hurt like the next game? Yeah, the very next game. <laughs> and that uh, that gives me the second overall pick in the yeah. rookie draft this year. So. Yeah, that's big. Who are you taking? I don't know. It depends on who uh, goes number one. We're going QB premium, what, two years from next year? Next year. So yeah. that's where I'm hurting. I only got Patrick Mahomes and Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback right now. I'm, I'm going to need – I'm going to be in the market for have, a quarterback. I have Taysom Hill. That's it. I have Aaron Rodgers too, but <laughs> – That's bad. That's bad, buddy. <laughs> that is bad. Um, let's wrap up the quarterbacks uh, here. Why don't you just give your 13 through 20 – what we're going to do is we'll give our 13 through 20. I'll, I'll, we'll put some, um, we'll tweet out our, our full rankings of everything. And maybe we can even do it with the receivers and the, and the running backs and stuff. So you guys can take a look and, and look back at it when the city season starts and tell us how wrong we were when we're making these predictions on March 3rd um, before the season even starts. But AK, go ahead. Give us your 13 through 20. 13, I have Kirk Cousins. 14, Baker Mayfield. 15, I have Carson Wentz. 16, Jalen Hurts, 17, Matt Ryan, 18, Thomas Brady, 19, Daniel Jones, 20, Derek Carr. James, why don't you go ahead? 
So 13, I had Hertz, 14, Baker Mayfield, 15, Matt Ryan, 16, Kirk Cousins, 17, Tom Brady, 18, Derek Carr, 19, Daniel Jones, and 20, Mr. Walking Boot himself, Big Ben. Wow. All right, 13, Stafford, then Tannehill, Brady, uh, Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins, Baker, Daniel Jones, and Teddy, Two Gloves, Bridgewater. Um, all right, let's get out of here. Uh, James, tell me where you can find me on Twitter. At Fitchy24. Any closing thoughts on quarterbacks? Go Bills. Go Josh Allen. Josh Allen. <laughs> Shaking my head. AK, what about you? Uh, at Kenny True Love, and uh, you guys are sleeping on Carson Wentz reconnecting with Frank Wright. I'm not gonna lie, I forgot about Carson Wentz. I didn't forget <laughs> about him, but I, I, I do think that that will help him um, being reconnected with with uh, with Frank Reich. I, I think that's a positive for him. I I'd like to see him come back, and uh, it was just the path that he went down last season was kind of shocking and surprising to me. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that, that plays out. And I guess my, my real final thought is just, I'm, I'm really excited for the free agency this year with all of these quarterbacks and, you know, the draft with, with some of the quarterbacks up at the top, just kind of really seeing where everyone falls. No, a question about that though, James, are you worried about the NFL, um, just hyping up all these trades just to get people talking and nothing happening? Cause it seems like the last couple of free agencies have happened. And same with the draft, that there's a lot of talk about trades and moves and just everything stays the same. I think a couple of the, the, the big name guys like the Watson and the Wilson, like I, I don't think those guys are going anywhere, but I, I think there could be some some dominoes in other places that, that fall. So we'll see. Yeah, we will. Jade is 16, 17 on Twitter, guys. Borderfield Sports, at Ball and Over. Find us everywhere there. We'll be tweeting out some, some stuff with all of our rankings so you can take a look at them and check those all out. I might even just put them in an article um, and, and post them. So, and then we can, we'll share it with attached to, attached to the video. So we'll have this, uh, this one out should be on YouTube and it should also be on the website in, in audio uh, version as well. So you have both of those options. Make sure wherever you're listening to it. So if you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, like it, retweet it, put in the comments who you think um, your sleeper quarterback is and, and let us know what you're thinking and, and maybe even where you think Carson Wentz is going to go since James and I didn't have him in the top 20 and AK does. So maybe tell us where you think Carson Wentz is going to go or who your sleeper quarterback is. Um, if you're listening to it on the audio version, make sure you're subscribing to that to share it around. Tell your friends, but we appreciate everybody being here, guys, and we'll talk to you later.